What's up guys? Rich here uh, for another episode of Youth in Business TV. Uh, this is episode 7. Um, in this episode I'm going to talk about negotiating tactics. Um, that probably sounds pretty interesting to you guys and, uh, and it is to me too and I'll tell you why. Uh, so before I get started with the episode, uh, I just want to do one little shout out. Um, I, uh, I, last night I created a uh, Facebook page for Youth in Business TV. And, um, uh, you know, Youth in Business TV is a YouTube series, but uh, I did create the Facebook page just uh, to try and broaden, uh, you know, the audience uh, of the show. The reason I, did, I never made one before is because um, I was real reluctant to make one because uh, I have so many Facebook pages already. <laughs> I have my business page, uh, I have my photography uh, gig page. Um, I have, you know, I have another uh, a page that I manage. Uh, I have two other pages uh, aside from that that I manage um, for other people. Uh, so I just have a lot of a lot of pages there. So, but I created one. So here is the uh, here's the address. Okay, it's right down there. So go ahead, check that out. Click like, you know, click uh, see updates and, and uh, interact. You know, email that and uh, and we'll we'll get it going. Okay, so uh, today, like I said, we're going to talk about uh, negotiating tactics. Um, so the reason I'm doing this episode, and when I first started business, I never thought, well, I never thought I was going to do a, a series on, uh, on YouTube about it, but I never would have thought that negotiating tactics were important in business, okay? And they are. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys are thinking, wow, that's the first thing I want to learn about. Um, the reason I never thought negotiating was important was because... I thought that the world was a very honest place. I thought, you know, uh, doing my business, I would just go to people's houses, give them estimates on their the work that they wanted, uh, write them the, you know, quote the total. They'd say okay or no, thank you, and then uh, we would do the work and get it done, and they would pay on time. Um, that is not true. <laughs> I found that to be completely not true. I don't want to say that reality is the opposite of that, but it's just that it's not that simple every time, okay? Uh, so there's pretty much two kinds of negotiating uh, when it comes to business, okay? There is, uh, you know, buying and selling. So when you negotiate, excuse me, uh, when, in, when you're in business, you have to buy, you know, items, things, services, uh, equipment, and so there is a process of negotiating in that. And then the big part, which I'm going to focus mostly on in this episode, is the selling part. So if you sell, you know, items, maybe you sell cell phones, maybe purses, I don't know. Um, and then maybe um, a lot of you are probably service professionals. So you're giving your services for, uh, for sale as a business. That's where you don't negotiate, but the client negotiates, okay? And that's... That one really gets tricky, so we're going to get into that. Um, so as far as negotiating comes to when you're buying, like I said, you're going to be buying uh, you're going to be buying items. Maybe you're buying tools. Maybe you're buying equipment. You know, maybe you're buying cars. You're buying vehicles. I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe you're buying you know, like I say, equipment for a kitchen if you're going to do a restaurant or if you're going to do like a taco stand or something. I don't know. Um, you know, those are all things that you need to buy. So you know, it's possible to negotiate in all of those transactions. Not all of them. I mean, if you buy something new, and let's say you're going to, you know, well, let's say you're gonna you're gonna do your home office. Okay. I mean, no matter what business you do, you're probably gonna have a home office or an office in general. So you go to Staples, you buy all the stuff, you stock up, come to the counter, and you put it down, and you say, you know, would you take a hundred bucks for it? You know, no. Okay, you can't negotiate like that. But um, a lot of the things that you do buy, you know, you can negotiate. So, for example, I have a wood shop, so I have a lot of different tools in there. Um, a lot of people think that when you when you start a business, you have to take a loan out. You know, you have to uh, go and buy the newest, you know, just most up to date, you know, brand spanking new off the showroom floor items and stuff. Okay, you don't. Um, a lot of people buy stuff that's used. A lot of people go on Craigslist, uh, eBay, you know. If you're gonna do photography, maybe you wanna get a second camera. Maybe you have a camera that you've had since you were in high school, and now you wanna get into it full-time, so you wanna have a second, you know, a camera body. Well, you know, you don't have to go out and buy the newest one from Best Buy. 
you can check YouTube, uh, you can check uh, uh, eBay, you know, or Craigslist, see what's out there. Um, so all those kinds of things you can negotiate, you know. Uh, let's see. So now you're probably wondering how to you, how do you negotiate? Like how would you go about negotiating? And some of you, I don't need to tell that because you guys are natural born, you know, negotiators. Um, but if you're not very familiar with it, basically you just have to have confidence. Okay, you just have to be, you know. Uh, you know, headstrong. You have to know what it is you want. You have to just, just like I said, be confident. Um, when you negotiate, you you just throw the number out. Hey, would you take this? If they say no, then you you know you kind of give them reasons why they should give it to you for that price. You know, oh, I came all the way here from you know Stockton, and it, you know it's like a two-hour drive, and I'm totally out. You know, all that gas. You know, I would just I really love to work with you. You know. Um, I'd really, you know, I, I really appreciate all that you do and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, if you could give me a great deal, I would be so grateful for you, you know, and, and stuff like that. So, so that's, that's how you negotiate. Um, one thing that's funny, do any of you guys watch the History Channel, okay? If you do, uh, I do. And so the shows I like are um, American Pickers, uh, Pawn Stars, and American Restoration. Now, if you've ever seen an episode of Pawn Stars, you will learn how to negotiate, okay? Those guys, what they do is they bring people on, you know, the show, and they say, oh, look at that great antique item, blah, blah, blah. You know, and they totally talk up the item, and they're your friend, and oh, that's so, you know, oh, I had one too when I was a kid, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then what do they do? Bam, straight face. I'll give you $50 for it. And she wants 200 you know? Um, but they but they stand tall, you know, and they and they hold their ground, and they just they're just the utmost. They're intimidators, but they're also you know the most confident people you'll ever see. So um, so if you've never seen an episode of Pawn Stars, watch that show because honestly, that's where I learned a lot of my negotiating tactics. And it's not really tactics. I mean, it's not really you know, it's not really what you say. It's just how you say it. You know, so so that's something I necessarily can't teach you. Um, so uh, you know, I hope you weren't hoping that I would teach you that in this episode. I'm just going to give you guys, you know, the, the 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 essentials as far as you know what to look out for, what to do, and stuff like that. So um, so yes, yeah, so check that that show out if you if you want to know how to get some really good uh, rock solid negotiating skills. Um, another thing as far as buying for your business. No matter what you get into, no matter what you're offering uh, as a business, buying in bulk always helps, okay? So for my example, uh, I do construction. I buy a lot of closet materials, okay, shelving and whatnot. If I buy, I used to go out and buy as much as like, my truck could fill, uh, my truck could hold. You know, I'd fill up the bed of my truck, give the guy 300 bucks, whatever. Um, that's a good way to do it. You're going to get some, you know, good materials and you, you, you're going to get a better price than, you know, if you had gone to like Home Depot or something. Uh, but when you buy in bulk, when you buy an entire pallet's worth of that stuff, then they're going to give it to you for two bucks less a piece, you know, or something like that. Um, it does make a big difference. So that's what I've been doing is I've been, uh, you know, saving up and, and actually just buying as much at one time as I can. Um, and most of the time, if you buy in bulk like that, you can negotiate with them. You know, they're gonna, they have their set rates, those, those types of places, but if you buy a big quantity, you can go, well, maybe would you sell it to me for $6 a sheet as opposed to, you know, seven fifty? You know, I don't know, you just throw it out there. Um, see what happens. Um, so, so buying in bulk is definitely a good thing. Let's see, uh, buying stuff used, again, again, I'm gonna say it, buying stuff used is okay. Now don't buy crap, don't buy stuff that's, you know, 30 years old and hardly works and, and doesn't, you know, isn't gonna be effective for you. You have to buy stuff that, that works, but a lot of people, in, in, you know, and no matter what they do, they think, oh, I have to just buy the newest, I just have to buy, you know, that's just how they are. Maybe they have money, so they're just used to buying new. Buying used is a great way to, to accumulate, uh, you know, the, the furnishings that your business needs. And those are the things you're going to get for half the price of a new one. You know, you can negotiate that. You can say, hey, you know, I'll give you, you know, 300 bucks for that thing as opposed to 600. And that's what it is new, you know. 
Um, so buying used is, is really, it, it can be good. Okay, uh, doo -doo -doo. so I'm gonna give you guys a tactic that I use for Craigslist. Now I talked about buying things used on Craigslist. Um, I love Craigslist. I love to buy stuff on Craigslist. Uh, I advertise on Craigslist, so I'm just on there all the time. So no matter what it is I'm buying, this is my automatic, uh, you know, uh, approach to buying something and selling. And I'll tell you how in a minute. I'll call the guy up. Hey, how's it going? I saw your blank. Um, <clears throat> I see you have it for two hundred dollars. Let's just say it was two hundred. Uh, the first thing I say, I'm really interested in buying that. Would you take one fifty? Now, most of the time, people on Craigslist they want to sell stuff. Okay, so when they're when they have a posting this is not what they typically do typically they don't post something and go I need to get three hundred dollars for that and I will not take anything less than that no most of the time it's something they don't need they don't use they need to get rid of so instead of throwing it away and getting nothing they put it on Craigslist so what so what is their mindset I want to get rid of it so you should go in saying well I see you have it for X but I would give you this and nine times out of ten, people will say right over the phone, yep, that's okay, I'll take that. Because they want to get rid of their stuff, okay? That's the beauty of it. So, bam, okay, would you take 150? Yes, I would. Oh, okay, great. Will you come and drop it off at my business or my shop or my house or whatever? Um, most of the time, as you guys may or may not know, when you buy on Craigslist, typically the rule is if you're buying, you go and pick it up. If you're selling, they come to you. Uh, but I, I, I don't do that. I try and get them to bring it to me. Why? Because I don't have to use the gas, you know? Uh, it's just another way for me to, uh, you know, uh, get, get, get the thing for a little bit less or, you know, it's a little easier on me. You know, instead of driving two hours to the Bay Area to go pick up this thing, they could drive it to me, you know? Why not? Um, the other nice thing about that is if you can get them to bring it to you, they've already come all that way. So if you're standing there and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, this isn't what I expected. The pictures don't show what it is at all. You, and you know, and you say, you know, I'm not going to give you 150 for this. I'd give you 50 bucks. You're, luck. you're lucky to get that, you know. The guy, he doesn't have a real leg to stand on because he's already at your house. If you had gone to his house, then he would say, well, 50 bucks, you know, screw you. Get out of here. Get off my property. Well, guess what? He's in your, he's in your field. So... Either you kick him out or you say, well, this is what I'll give you, you know? So it, it works well. So try that, okay? Uh, call them up. Always ask for the lower price. And then uh, you can further negotiate when they get there, but always try and get them to come to you. Okay? Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, you know, I want to give you an example uh, about uh, an instance that I did that. I mean, I do that all the time. A lot of the things I buy on Craigslist, that's what I always do. But uh, here was an example. I was buying nail guns. Actually, when I was going to build this shop, I needed a nail framer, uh, a nail gun, a framing nailer. And I didn't have one. So uh, I went on Craigslist, looked it up. There was a guy selling a nailing, uh, uh, framing nailer and like a little staple gun. And he had them for like 60 bucks, which is really cheap. If, okay, if you guys don't know tools, that's really cheap. Uh, usually both of those would have cost like, you know, three, 400 new. So 60 bucks, I was like, well, shoot, I'm going to get that. So I called him up and I don't know what it was. I was just, I wasn't, I, I was just lazy that day. Maybe I was out of gas or something. And uh, I said, you know, I, he had it for like 65 and I said, oh, 60. Okay, sure. So I said, um, can you come and take it, bring it to me? And he said, well, yeah, but you know, I'd rather if you came here. So this is what I told him. I said, oh, um, I have to borrow a car. Uh, I don't have my license. Uh, maybe I can borrow my brother's car. So maybe we can get together tomorrow. So again, guys, people are trying to sell stuff. So he was like, well, okay, I'll bring it to you tonight. Where are you? Give me your address, blah, blah, blah. Texted it to him. So he shows up to my house and he's thinking, because obviously I just told him I don't have a license. You know, he's probably thinking I'm like 16. I don't know what the hell a, a nail gun is. So he brings it up to me and I'm just like, oh, okay, cool, bam. Clack, clang, you know, I'm checking it out. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm looking for. And he's just like, whoa, he's totally blown away. Like, how does this kid who doesn't know anything about, you know, tools knows exactly what he's doing? It was just really funny. But, uh, but you know, think of things like that. Think of little little things like that. That, that That's negotiating right there. That's like, 
that's negotiating 101, you know? <laughs> so, but sometimes you guys need to know uh, when to actually buy uh, new items, okay? Because buying used is fun, it's, it's, you know, it's, it, it is a good thing, it, you know, you save yourself some money. Uh, but some things you just need to buy new. I mean, um, you know, my big table saw that I, uh, I showed you guys in the introductory episode when I first bought that, it was like $2,000, you know, it was a really expensive piece of equipment. But it has been the, you know, most sturdy thing I've had, you know, in these five years that I've been in business. So, you know, some stuff like that, you really do want to buy new and just spend the money and, ju and no negotiating, just get it done and uh, have it last you for a long time, okay? Because there's a lot to be said about buying quality things, quality items, okay? Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, okay. So now I want to get into um, the the other part of this uh, episode, which is not bu uh, not buying, not negotiating when you buy, but actually negotiating when you sell. And this was the thing I never thought I would ever have to worry about. Okay. When you offer your services, you have a price. Okay. Or when you sell your products, you have a price. Uh, you have a price in mind. Of course, you have a price you want to get, and then you have you know what people will pay. Um, so, you know, what you have in mind should be pretty realistic. What you want to get for your uh, products or services, that's one thing, but that may be unrealistic. I mean, if you guys think you're going to buy, you know, used whatever, you, you know, used things, you know, all throughout your town or whatever and sell them for like so much money, used furniture or whatever, um, it's just probably not that easy, you know what I mean? Um, so, so the, the price you have in mind should be pretty close to what you can actually get for it. Um, and then of course there's the price that people will pay. I mean, some things people, you know, just won't pay a lot of money for. Um, <clears throat> so like used clothing, you know, so, I mean, if it's designer stuff, if it's like Gucci handbags and all that stuff, yeah, you can get a lot of money for that. But, you know, you know, just clothing that you've worn, like a t-shirt like this, I could not sell this for 20 bucks. I mean, I probably, bought, I probably bought this shirt for 20 bucks new at the skate shop or whatever, but I'm not gonna sell it for that much, you know what I mean? So that's a little bit be, being realistic. Um, I'm kind of getting off subject here. The point is, you guys are offering your services and products for a certain price, and what are your customers gonna do? They're gonna try and get you to sell it for less than that. And this is what drives me crazy. Um, it always has. When I first, like I said, when I first got started in business, I thought it was like show up, give a you know, give the family an estimate, tell them this is the price. They either say yes, we'll get it done, or no, we'll get it done somewhere else. And then you do the work. Okay? It doesn't work like that. A lot of the times, they will try and 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 do things to get you to give them a better price. And so, so all these topics I'm talking about on this episode, guys, they're literally things that I learned from my clients, from my customers, okay? I was the innocent kid. I was like the, the newborn baby. Oh, I don't know anything about the world, you know, and I'm so innocent. And then I joined the, the business world and I was like, wow, this place is really ugly. It's really dirty, you know? So, so that's where I've learned all my negotiating tactics is actually from these people, okay? Um, I've had people tell me things like, I've had people belittle me, you know, I go to their house, I give them an estimate, and they're like, well, this is way too much money for this work, and you're not even that good of a, 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 of a worker, and, and you don't even do that good of work, you know, I, I would never pay this, um, you know, I've had people, you know, just, j just totally make me feel like shit, so that I will give them a better price, it's like, whoa, you know, like, that's not fair, that's not cool, I would never do that to someone, you know. Um, I've had people, this is another one I hear a lot, oh, you give me a good price on this, I'll tell my brother about you, and he'll get it done, so that'll be even more business, so you can give me a good price now so that you can make more money later. The brother never calls, he probably didn't even have a brother, dude, please. Uh, so don't fall for that. Um, th there's a lot of stuff that people say, okay? And so now I'm going to tell you guys what kind of things you can do to avoid being falling victim to that. Um, okay, so w for my work, for my business, I have um, a very calculated, um, my, my, the price I charge for my services is a very calculated number. So the materials cost X, 
and the labor costs x plus whatever um, some people what I'm saying is stay away from doing this oh you know you want that I'll give it to you for 350 okay because okay so that's one thing what I do is I'll say oh you want that okay <clears throat> let me measure it for you now let me go out to my car and figure out how much it's gonna cost now I'm figuring it out and it costs three hundred and fifty two dollars and forty six cents okay it's very calculated um, the reason I stay away from just throwing those numbers out at people because I pretty much know what it's gonna cost I mean roughly but the reason I don't do that <clears throat> is because when I say oh 350 what do they say Oh, will you do it for 300 okay no no don't you hate when people do that it's so annoying um, your time is is your skill it's your craft okay you you know the time that you invest in the work for these people that's that's you that's literally you your life you're giving their your energy your time your expertise if they could do it themselves they would but they can't so you're doing it okay so they need to pay you for that and you can't sell yourself short when it comes to the business that you own. When I first got started, you know, I would just throw numbers at people and they'd be like, oh, you know, you know, 500 bucks? Well, will you do it for 450? Why not, dude? Come on, whatever. And I'd be like, well, all right, God, I guess. And I would never make any money that way, you know? So, um, so my thing is very, very calculated. It, you know, it's not it's not just me saying this price because when you do that quick exchange that what do you want for that couch 300 you know they're gonna be like oh 250 you know no you do you say oh what do you want for that couch well let me go figure it out blah 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 blah. you're taking time they're doing something else now you come back three hundred and forty seven dollars and seventy seven cents okay so it's not so it doesn't give them a lot of room to start you know trying to knock you down and trying to get you to give them a better price sometimes they still will sometimes they will still do that they'll still say oh well uh, I know that that's how much it costs but would you do it for this most of the time I can tell when someone's gonna do that I can tell when someone's going to try and haggle with me and sometimes they'll even say it they'll even say oh give me the price quote but make sure it's negotiable I hate when people say that why would you say that um, when people do say that to me and when I know that they are going to do that I just I literally just go out to my car and I add up the price and then I tack on like 10 or 15 percent and then they'll and then they'll say oh well give me a better price my brother blah 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 I just say okay well I don't often do this but I can give you a 10 percent discount right now you take it now you sign my contract or it's going to be the full price you know and so most of the time they just go oh okay okay and then they sign it um, so do that. So, and now another thing I want to talk about is, again, it's with, it's, with, it's with confidence that you must walk in your business. So, for every, everything that you do, there must be a reason, okay? So, this is what happens a lot. I'll go out to give an estimate to somebody, and they'll say, oh, can I have this, this, and this, and this, this, and this, and I add it up, and it turns out to be a little bit more than they wanted to pay, um, which is okay, it's, that's all right. But so they'll say to me, oh, well, why don't we knock this off? Why don't we take this down? Why don't we do that? And then how much would it cost? And so I kind of recalculate it and figure it out, and I give them the price. They always ask me, why is it this? Well, you know, why does that cost so much? Why does this thingy cost so much? Why does it cost so much for this and that? You can't just stand there and say, well it just costs that much because I say so okay you can't say that you have to have a reason um, a lot of the times when people ask me something like that something really trivial I'll just say you know the price of material has gone up uh, the supplier you know I, I buy from they just raised their prices on me this is the last of my you know early stock so this stock is still on you know a, a good price but if you want that it's going to cost a little bit more because they just bought, you know, I would have to go out and buy that and they just raised me the price on me. So that seems to work for people. Um, again, that's a really sneaky tactic, guys. Like, I feel bad for telling people this because now they're going to know how I negotiate, <clears throat> negotiate, excuse me. But, but I do use that because um, if you don't have a reason, if you just say, well, I just want to charge more or I'm charging more because this work is harder to do. You know what I mean? Not, they don't buy that. They don't like that. They, 
a lot of the times they think your time is worth nothing. They think that you need to give them what they want and they need to pay this price. Okay, so so you have to be pretty clever. You have to think on your toes when you're when you're um, when you're giving reasons for why things are the way that they are. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so and then another part of that is some things you don't need to explain, like for example, there, I offer two different types of drawers in my closet organizers. Okay, one is an expensive type and one is not. Um, one costs a lot more, one is a bit cheaper. And here's the big difference for me. One is very hard to set up, it's very complex. One is just bam, 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 it's done, I put it in. So when people ask me, you know, can I have the difference in price between those drawers? I'll give it to them, but, you know, and then they'll ask me, why does this one cost way more? The reason is because I'm spending all that time on putting that stupid thing together and installing it in your house. This one, I just go click, 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 and it's done. So it's cheap, you know? But I don't need to explain that to you, you know, you being the customer. I don't need to explain that to the customer, you know? They're not gonna understand. Well, it's just putting it together, isn't it? You know, that's what they all say. They always say something like that. I mean, no, it's not just putting it together. It's my time, dude. Like, I gotta go out and buy these things. They're way expensive. Then I gotta put them together. I hate doing that, you know? I'd rather just put together these simple ones, but you don't want the simple ones. You want the complicated ones, so you're gonna have to pay for it. So, you know, that's when I start to think of these kind of, you know, these tactics on, 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 on why things cost more, you know? I can't just give them a reason because I'm charging more, dude, because it's harder to do, you know? Because I really hate doing it. I mean, I can't say that, you know? So, so uh, you know, some things you just don't need an explanation. They don't need the, you know, they don't need to hear the actual explanation for why they are. Um, <clears throat> another, another way to uh, keep your price high and or where you want it is, you know, if you give a quote to someone for your service and they say, well, could you do this? You just say, you know, I'm pretty busy right now. You know, I've got a lot of time, you know, I've got a lot of people ahead of you, okay? And these people are all paying full price. So I can't just give you a deal because you want it, you know, and then work for these people. You know, I can't, I can't put you ahead of the line and work for cheap and make these people wait when they're paying full price. So, you know, I'll say, well, you know, if you want that price, I can give it to you in maybe a month or two. Or you got to, you know, or if you want the service now, you know, this is the best price I can give you. And, and you tell them that. And most of the time, they'll just take that price because they don't want to wait. If they wanted to wait, you know, they wouldn't have been calling you. So, um, so they want to get it done. So, so that's, a, that's a really good tactic, saying you're busy. Sometimes over the phone, I'll just, you know, before I even meet with a client, if I can tell that they're kind of, you know, trying to work me a little bit, I'll just straight up say, um, you know, let's, let's put it off till next week because I'm really busy. I'm just super swamped. Uh, you know, I can't find any time, you know, oh, you were lucky that I even answered my phone right now. Like, wow, I'm just so busy. Sometimes I'll do that, you know, and, uh, and, it, and it makes me sound like I'm just very, very busy so I can charge, you know, the appropriate price that I need to. Uh, need to. Um, let's see, what's another point I wanted to make? Well, basically, sometimes you do need, you know, sometimes you do need the money. Sometimes, you know, you, you've had a slow month, <clears throat> you've had a slow year, whatever, you need to make up sales. Sometimes you really do need to get those jobs. So, in that case, you do give them, you do give them a better price. I mean, I hate to do that, I really hate doing that because I don't want people to think I don't want to get the reputation of the negotiator, uh, but but sometimes when I'm low and I need money, you know, I, I've had a slow month, um, I got to pay my bills, I'll just take the less money, you know, I'll say, I'll give you this, um, and they'll say, well, that's a lot of money, and I just say, okay, well, I'll, I'll knock, you know, 200 bucks off or something. Um, it's all it's all a part of, you know, how busy you are versus how much you need that money. So, so sometimes you do have to do it. I know it sucks. It really sucks. But, um, but do it if you do. Okay. And, uh, and then my last point is you guys, when you get a business, or maybe you are now in business, okay, you're in this club that we call the Business Owners Club. Okay. You're in the club. I'm in the club. And as members of this club, we have a mutual respect for each other. So, um, 
So I respect people that have businesses and I never try and cheat a business owner because I would never want them to try and cheat me, okay? The, the clients, they're not in our club. They try and cheat us all the time. You know, we give them excuses, we give them, we, we use tactics on them to try and get the prices we want. But, you know, as far as business owners go, you know, we can't cheat each other, okay? So, just an example, you know, I went to a printing place the other day and uh, I said, you know, how much would it be for so-and-so flyers? You know, so many hundred flyers, you know, size, color, blah, 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 double-sided. And he said, okay, it would be, you know, however much money it was. And, uh, and I was just comparing prices. So in my mind, I was thinking like, okay, I went to my regular printers. They said this, he says this, you know, I went to that Kinko's and they were like, okay, wow, that's a lot of money. So in my mind, I was thinking, and he said to me, you know, I can't really give you a better price than that, man. Like he, he thought I was trying to think up something to say to him to give him a better price. And he, he, you know, he was just like, no, you know, I, that's the best I can do, dude. Like, my boss is on my ass. You know, I can't give out any more deals. And I was like, whoa, man. Like, dude, I'm totally with you. You know, I'm not trying to get a better price out of you. I'm not trying to cheat you. You know, you have your overhead. You know, you have your business. You have your expenses. I respect that, dude. Like, I'm not here to try and, you know, and I wasn't. I wasn't trying to get a better price. You know, I'm going to actually get that. So I, I, was, I paid full price for the thing, you know. Um, so that's what I'm saying. Respect a business the way you would expect people to respect your business, okay? You have, you pay for things, you know, you sell things. The difference is, you know, the money you make is the difference in that price. So when people try and get you to sell things for either the price that you buy them or less, you don't make any money. You lose money. So, so, so don't do that to, don't do that to other businesses, okay? Like I said, we're in this club and, uh, and we all respect each other. We're all in it for each other, even if it's our competition, you know? We want to help them out because, you know, they make the world a better place, uh, the business world a better place. Okay? So this is Youth in Business TV. This is episode seven. Uh, I know it was long. Um, I, I covered a lot of the topics I wanted to talk about. Um, again, guys, if you want to be featured on the series, if you want to have an interview, let me know. Hit me up. Um, We'll, we can do in uh, you know live in person Skype. We can just do questions. We can just do whatever. So thanks for watching. Keep subscribing. Keep watching. Keep viewing. Check out the Facebook, and uh, we'll have some series. I mean, we'll have some uh, episodes coming up real soon for you guys. Okay.